I tried Chinese water torture. It made me see things I can't unsee. Written by Blair Daniels. Watch me do the Chinese water torture. Will I fall into psychosis? Yeah, I'm a content creator. I decided to drip water on my head for five hours and live stream the entire thing. The things we do for money, huh? My friend Leslie here has restrained me, I said into the camera, as the dripper hovered above me. My hands are handcuffed behind my back and ankles are strapped to the chair and I'm completely unable to move. Leslie gave an awkward thumbs up at the camera. <laughs> Did you know Chinese water torture didn't originate in China? Its earliest account is from the 15th century Italy. There's also a kind of creepy drawing from Sweden with it. Leslie, can you hold that up for them? She held up the drawing that I printed out from Wikipedia. A murderer screaming as water dripped onto his head. I grinned into the camera. Apparently, if you do this long enough, you start hallucinating. 10 hours and then you go into psychosis. I don't believe it, but we'll find out, won't we? Leslie, do the honors. She reached up and turned the knob. A second later, I felt a cold, fat drop of water fall onto my scalp. One hour has elapsed. So one hour just passed, I said, looking into the camera that I placed all across the room. I feel mostly good. The water is really annoying at first, but I've kind of gotten used to it. I just wish I could just dry off my face and get out of these handcuffs. The metal was binding into my wrists and my left hand was asleep, but I was stuck. Like an idiot, I didn't have a backup plan. I had to wait for Leslie. Four more hours to go. Hour two sucked. I nodded to my sweatshirt, which was soaked. I'm tired, I'm cold, and another drop of water hit me on the head, oozing into my hair. The dripping isn't at regular intervals, and it's driving me crazy. I never know when the next one's coming. Sometimes it drips out one, then one right after another. Sometimes it waits several minutes between drips. Sometimes I hear this little gurgling noise beforehand, and then I try to get ready for it, but somehow that like makes it worse, you know? Still wasn't as bad as the frosting challenge I did last year. Don't ask, but it was starting to become very unfun. Maybe dad was right. Maybe it was time for me to get a quote unquote real job. Three hours. I was cold, my wrists stung, and there was a pressure in my chest, a ball of anxiety, as I waited for that next godforsaken drop of water to hit me. It was stupid, logically, I knew that, but it was just water, but the repetition and the irregularity of it, it was like listening to a ticking clock, a broken clock, out of rhythm, out of sync, tick, tick, tock, tick, 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 talk. You know, sometimes I heard like soft gurgling sound and my entire body would seize up. When the drop didn't come, I relaxed, only for a big fat one to hit me square on the head and slowly, ever so slowly, trickle down my face. Then it would bead there, sticking to my chin for what felt like hours until finally breaking free and splattering onto my already soaked sweatshirt. I'm not hallucinating or anything, I said, but I'm really stressed out. I can't remember the last time I was this stressed. I closed my eyes and let out an anguished sigh. And then I remembered. I was handcuffed to the chair, but I didn't need my hands to make a call. Hey Google, I shouted in the direction of my phone. Call Leslie. She picked up after two rings. Hey, Charlie. Everything okay? Relief flooded me. Suddenly the handcuffs didn't hurt so much. The water dripping onto my face barely made me flinch. Uh, yeah, sort of. 
I, I think I'm done with this water torture thing. Oh, already? It's that miserable, huh? Yeah, I'm freezing cold and sore, and I just don't think I could keep this up much longer. The oh, this one just hit my cheek, and it's slowly traveling down my neck like an icy finger. Can you come over and untie me? I'm afraid I can't do that. My stomach dropped. Uh, what? I asked with a nervous laugh. Uh, wh why not? Silence. Leslie? A pause. Had the call disconnected? I glanced at the counter. My phone wasn't there. What the? But, but then I remembered. Before setting up the water torture, I left my phone charging upstairs. There was no way I actually talked to Leslie just now. Oh crap, I, I gotta get out of here. I violently rocked my body back and forth, trying to move the chair underneath me. If I could just get a chair a foot forward, I'd be out of the water's range. With a grunt, I lunged forward, but the chair barely budged. After three and a half hours, I sat completely frozen in the chair. Drops of water slowly slid down my cheeks and onto my sweater, but I didn't even blink. I wouldn't let it get to me. Another drop. That's the 107th since the hallucinations. I'd been counting them to keep my concentration, and it was working. Gurgling. Here comes 108. I froze, staring towards the hallway, but no sounds opened. What? I let out a breath that I had been holding and closed my eyes, trying to calm myself. Breathe in, breathe out. In less than two hours, Leslie will be here. I just have to make it until then. Something cold poked against my spine. As I froze, it slowly, carefully made its way up my back. Tears burned my eyes as I resisted the urge to turn around. <sighs> it's not real. It, it's not real. But it felt real. In my research of water torture, I read about how an artist in New Zealand who had done it for some sort of art exhibit in the final hours said that she felt the presence of her dead husband stroking his finger up and down her back. But the cold finger slowly moving up my spine did not feel loving. As I began to sob, it passed my shoulder blades, heading toward my neck. Drip. Almost four hours. I heard a child laughing, softly, just beyond my view in the hallway. Little pattering footsteps across the wooden floor, but when I finally saw a glimpse of it, there was something horribly off with the way that it moved, like it was something inhuman trying to imitate human movement. Drip. Something was walking behind me. I could see its shadow pressing and passing over me. Stretched out onto the tile floor, cold fingers grazed my spine again. And this time, when the fingers reached my back, they squeezed. Drip. And then the most horrible one, the last one that I remember. Before, everything went black. The voice started off soft, barely audible, but I recognized it instantly. My mother's voice. She was singing Bram's lullaby, which she used to sing to me as a child, before she died 14 years ago. The lullaby got louder as I was strapped to the chair. Frozen, pleasant dreams until the dawn. The sounds moved around the house, sometimes coming from out the hallway, sometimes from upstairs. Tears ran down my face as I listened to her sing. Start the day with a smile. Drip. Her voice was right next to my ear. I screamed. I began rocking in the chair back and forth, violently trying desperately to escape, but the chair barely moved. Drip. She was standing right in front of me. I stared at her baby blue slippers on my tile floor, my gaze slowly went up across her nightgown toward the face that I had not seen in 14 years. I woke up in a hospital.
Leslie's face hung over mine, her eyes red and swollen from crying. I was so worried about you. I thought, I thought we'd lost you. That night, after I returned home, I watched the replay of the live stream. I fast forwarded to the last thing that I remember around four hours into the video. I could see myself sitting on the chair, the dripper hanging above me. I watched myself scream as I heard my mother's voice in my ear, that I saw my eyes slowly travel upwards and stop at about five feet off the ground where her face would be. Then I violently turned away and began bashing my head into the kitchen table. After several sickening thwacks, I could see blood, thick patches blooming out of my hair, running down my face, but I didn't stop. If anything, I sped up, wildly thrashing my head into the table as hard as I possibly could. And then my entire body went still. I had knocked myself unconscious. I watched in horror as I lay there, eyes closed, blood pooling onto the table. No wonder Leslie thought I was dead. Several minutes went by, and then I saw her run into frame, frantically tending to me. But then I saw something else. Just for a second, in the water pooled on the floor, a dark shape flitting across the reflections then vanishing from sight. Maybe there's more to this water torture than we thought. That was, I tried Chinese water torture. It made me see things I can't unsee. Written by Blair Daniels. And found in the No Sleep subreddit.